But see, that's that's why the robot analogy becomes problematic within itself. Because if 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 we were to use that analogy itself to, for some theistic meaning, and if and we would allude it to kind of saying that well, if we're merely we have no free wills, we're merely robots. Like um, what, what's problematic about that is that if if we are the robots ourselves and we're trying to conjure our own metaphysical kind of reality in ourselves, then we are. We're, we're merely pondering when, when that who, which, in which created the robot really knows the answers. So I mean, so I mean, with that assumption on the al analogy, we ourselves are assuming, on an intellectual or a logical level, that we are an, an equal and in adequacy as, as the creator himself, and we're really, we're, we're merely the robots to an extent. Then we're, do we really have that kind of capability? But if we were robots, then we wouldn't have this discussion about free will in the first place. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Here's the point about free will. No, we're, we're not saying we're not actually. I want to hear defend that. Why do you? Well, I mean, I this is. I, uh, I think we all are talking about free will because we know that it exists, and we think it's. We feel it exists. We we feel that it's um, well, it, is, it well. deserves to be talked about. And we've experienced what we think to be free will enough times to say, let's discuss it. <laughs> um, my theory on free will is that I think that I personally, I, I, do, I do believe in God. I, I believe that, um, that God allows a, a bad to happen because without the freedom and the possibility of bad to happen, then there wouldn't be any freedom and possibility for good to happen. Um, so it's just like, it's just all out there. But even at the same time, like what's good and what's bad is like, kind of up to us too, like lots of times like when I meet, like some of my closest friends, when I first met them, I thought they were total dicks, I thought they were total assholes. But once you get across that abrasiveness of, of beyond what you think is a bad interaction, like my interactions, and you, I think if you're able to undercut those models in your head as to what you think is a bad interaction or a good interaction, and just kind of just, I don't know, go beyond that even, um, there's something that's even like indescribable that has so much more substance, which is, I don't know, it's kind of like behind why I like a lot of people who are like dicks at first. But it's weird. I don't know if that makes any sense. Like, yeah, but there's still, there's still the question of natural kind of problematic evil on evil to an extent. And we're going to define things such as, like, I don't know, a hurricane wiping out kind of like a mass array of people well, yeah. beyond control. I mean, that's still, there's still lays that kind of problematic question. And that's, and that's, I think that's... Which question? Which question? Which question? Which question? Which question? How can something theistically kind of so powerful and so loving and, and, and powerful allow something to happen? What do you I, I think that? in terms of natural evils, we kind of have to ask ourselves, assuming that there is an, an all-powerful being, what exactly do we want from them? If hurricanes are evil and tornadoes are evil and earthquakes are evil and cancer is evil and AIDS is evil, <laughs> Do we want to live forever? Because that was a whole different topic. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Resurrected yeah. immortality. Yeah. Wow. At a certain point, that has to be okay. Well, yeah, but why not d die of old age? Yeah, how about just live a better life without being ravaged by cancer or having to worry about Katrina, you know, coming back and fucking you in the ass again? <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe we should have done it under sea level. <laughs> but I think it's problematic that one has to ask himself. As you're asking yourself, it's just like, is 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 there is it necessary to, to allude to the theistic kind of God or anything like that, or can we just accept that there there's there are certain laws of nature that we must live by, and and we we have no reason to look to someone else. I don't know. And I, I, I think wanted, that you bring up a really interesting question. And That's I wanted to um, bring up the um, compatibilism because um, I'm sorry, I forgot your name already. Steve. Steve, Steve. Um, you were saying that you met people that you thought were. And you overcome that and you find out that they're great. Um, in the same sense, I can give you the example. Today I had a research paper due, but I was like, and I missed my bus, bus so I couldn't turn it in. Like, it has to be late. But at the same time, the inter agent, no matter what happens, it was out of my control if the bus was late, you know? Mm -hmm. But I think the inner agent uh, has a choice, has a free will as to how they're going to deal with what we can't control physically. And that's where I think free will can also come in. Um, the inner agent has free will. Like we might not necessarily have free will on what happens in the physical, but the inner agent has a free a freedom as to how they uh, react. Maybe to the physical. Soul and mind of inner agent 
yeah, like, described as well. Like a soul, maybe for me, a soul for you, mm -hmm. maybe your mind. I don't know. It just depends. Consciousness. Just the thing that yeah, we have here. Yeah, consciousness. Yeah. consciousness would be a good definition. It's your consciousness. Yeah, it's not about. That would be, be a good definition of an inner agent. Yeah, definitely. So you're saying that if you're not aware of that you only have control over your right. reactions to certain things. There are going to be things that are out of your control, like yes. what's in your body. Yeah. But at the same time, how you deal with that yeah. it really is. Is where you can be free. But like even if you're like like a like dominoes, you know that's a deterministic mm -hmm. example. You push dominoes and they fall apart. There's nothing we can do about that. You know we can't control the physical, but we can control what's in. Like a paraplegic, you know, like they they can choose to be angry at the world for being a paraplegic, or they can uh, make use of their mind in other ways. I think uh, the free the freedom is within. Well, well, sure, about things like trauma victims or people who have some, you know, biological cross-wiring where they're not able, like, their chemical balances or imbalances make them act a certain way. I think, you know, or it doesn't even have to get that far in depth. What about people like Tourette's or people who have Tourette's, they yeah. can't control what they say or they can't control how they say it or how loud they say yeah. it. These are things that they cannot control. I've had a friend they, can't, they can't control how they feel about these things in certain cases. So, I mean, well, I mean, they can't control how they feel, perhaps maybe they can't control on a, on a metaphysical level, what they want to say, how they feel, but maybe perhaps. Well, I'm not, I'm not using about that. Using Tourette's specifically. I'm oh, saying, you can come up with all sorts of different examples. It's no, like, I understand, but, but I'm just saying, but I'm saying the there are specific. many, many examples peppered against the entire brain of people saying, well, sure, we can be compatible in this respect, in this respect, mm -hmm. but for as many examples as you offer, there's at least 50 others that you can say and counterbalance that. And so likewise. If, but, if, but, if, yeah. exactly, but if you're going to keep arguing back and forth about that, how compatible is it? If you can offer arguments on both sides and you should keep running up against the same brick wall, how compatible is it? Well, we can run up against brick walls for everything. Like, we can masturbate our brains as much as we want all day today. You know, it doesn't matter, like, what we're talking about. Thank you, Professor Dixon. Those are Dixon's quotes. <laughs> but, um, I mean, yeah, we can totally argue about everything, you know, but it's just the fact that some people choose to react to certain things and others don't. That's just a, a fact of life, you know. Like we can argue it, but it's, it's something that we see on an everyday basis. Mm -hmm. But you never thought you, you never thought you had to act a certain way. Like you just felt so. Like so, if someone killed your daughter right in front of you, God forbid, you wouldn't say, "Well, I could, you know, kick your ass right I'd now," kill them. or I could just I'd say, "You know what? I forgive," because that's the best way to be. I can't. You can, that. but you wouldn't. I would, you absolutely I wouldn't. I would, but someone else would. Someone else might. Okay, but you don't. Else but you're saying, yeah. yeah, we had the possibility. We've argued yeah. the possibility all day. But yeah, I'm saying, exactly. you're saying that you feel so obligated to act this certain way. You don't get to choose that. I said that. I said what? You feel so obligated to kill that person. You say, I would kill them. That's what I would do. You okay. know how you would act. Okay. You feel and obligated. Your point? What's your point? My point is that you don't get to choose or you wouldn't choose another option. I choose I to kill them. Right. You, don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't choose another option. You feel like that is the only thing but you would choose. Not but I choose not to choose to call the cops to them. There are some, there are some mothers who have had their children killed, who called the cops and didn't kill them. But I'm saying, why would you? I'm talking why about me. I'm talking about, about you also. Yeah, why you didn't choose your children. This isn't about me. This is about free will. You brought about free will. You brought up the example of. This isn't about what I do. This is about free will. I'm talking about yours. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So this is about Marjorie's free will or what? For example, right now. Let's let's get some reactions from this side of the room for a second. I know I got a lot of stuff going on over here. So let's uh, Cameron, and then I think you wanted to say something. Well, uh, I was saying that just because you. You, are more, you, you want to choose one option more than another. It doesn't mean that the options are going to fit. But it's just you choose to go with the, with the option that you feel more justified with. Even if that's wrong. Even if you feel that it's wrong, you still choose to go with it. You could, you could. Just because you choose to go with the one that you deem wrong, doesn't mean that you could have gone with a choice that seems more good. But if like the argument about ways. free will is to have these people try to learn from their mistakes and learn from their suffering, that's why God allows suffering to happen so we can better ourselves and learn. Then what good does it do us to understand that we could do something else, understand that there are possibilities of better courses of action, and still do the wrong thing? How do we grow in that? That's, 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 that's experience. It's, it's experience. I, I think yeah. it could be a lot of us. I would especially say, me too, I'm so greedy for experience. Like for my last relationship, I had the best relationship in the world, but I was so greedy for experience, I cheated on my girlfriend. It's like, amen. Bro, oh, it's so going on YouTube, by the way, dude. <laughs> 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 All right, I'll censor some stuff, dude. No, but, you know, hypothetically speaking. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> My friend told me. Yeah. <laughs>